Hey guys, welcome back to Start Manga, where I teach you everything you need to know about how to draw like a manga artist. I'm your host Spencer, and today we're going to go over 5 essential tips that every manga artist needs in Clip Studio Paint. I've put together a bunch of tips that I think you guys will find super useful, and I found them amazingly helpful when I'm trying to create art recently. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to like and subscribe, and comment down below what your favorite tip is from the video. Also, if you really, really feel like supporting me today, please go check out my Patreon page. It's up and it's new, and I think you guys are really, really going to like what I put up on there. Alright, with all that being said, let's get straight into the video. A lot of the time when you're making line art, it can be really messy and hard to find what you did wrong that caused it to look that messy. So here we're going to cover a solution for that. What you're going to do is select the layer that you want to correct. Then you're going to go to the layer property window of that layer and turn on the border effect. Now what this is going to do is it's going to create a border around your line art. Right now you're not going to be able to see it most likely because it's a white border at the start. So what you're going to do is set that border to a bright color. For me, I like to do a bright red. This is going to show you where you may have left some mistakes or some extra lines that you didn't want to be there, and it's really easy to correct them now that you can actually see where they are. I find this especially helpful because sometimes in my art I tend to leave a couple specks around, and this is just a quick and easy fix for me to find those. The fill tool can be really, really confusing sometimes. Once in a while you're trying to fill in something and it's going to fill in the wrong layer and you don't know what to do. So here's a quick solution on how to set up reference layers for it. First, what you're going to do is set the layer that you want referenced as a reference layer, and you're going to do that by pressing this Lighthouse button. Then, you're going to go to the Fill Tool Properties and set it to Refer to Reference Layers by, again, pressing this Lighthouse button now in the Tool Properties section. And then, you can start filling, and as you can see, it's only going to refer to the layer that I have turned into a reference layer. When I try to fill in anything else, it's just going to refer to the original layer, which is really, really great when you're trying to fill in these specific areas that you're not able to reach sometimes. A big problem that I have with a lot of finished drawings is that it's really hard to edit them. If I want to use the lasso tool for example, I end up overlapping things, changing up line art that I don't want to change, and it's just annoying to deal with. So here's a quick solution. Now a lot of people may not know this, but Clip Studio Paint has a liquify tool, which is labeled by this bending mesh icon right here. You can use this tool to move, expand, and correct errors in your drawings. I find it really helpful for enlarging a lot of things that I tend to draw small, like noses for example. I have a lot of trouble with that. So I'm hoping this will be really helpful for you guys as well. One of the hardest things to do in Clip Studio Paint is turn scanned paper and pen into line art. A big problem with this is if you use things like the wand tool for example, you're going to end up with pixelated lines a lot of the time. So here's a quick fix for that. Start by going to the Layer tab, then press New Correction Layer and then Tone Curve. Turn that curve that you see pop up into a bit of an S shape like this, which will increase the contrast, making your blacks very dark and your whites very bright. Now go to the Edit tab, press Convert Brightness to Opacity, and this is going to remove all the whites in your drawing, which leaves you with just the line work. It's really clean. Sometimes if you have eraser marks or smudge marks, they're going to show up, so you'll have to erase those by themselves, but that's not too much of a big deal, because you've gotten rid of almost all of the white in the drawing, which is incredibly helpful. And with that, you can create a new layer and you can start drawing and coloring over top of it. It's a really quick and easy way to get your line art into the digital program. Give it a try. Now, one of the most tedious things you can possibly do in a drawing app is create backgrounds. Now, creating backgrounds can be fun, but sometimes you just don't feel like doing it. In my last video, I showed you a quick tip on how to create backgrounds from images. But this time, we're going to load up some backgrounds that are pre-installed into Clip Studio. What you're going to do is go to the Materials tab and then press the 3D tab under that and look for circle icons like this cafe option. What these are are panorama 360 degree backgrounds. These are especially useful for animators because if you're drawing someone from one angle and you want to see them go to the other side of that background, it's really easy to just pan as you're drawing those different frames and you don't have to recreate the background every single time, which I know even though I'm not an animator, must be one of the most annoying things you could possibly do in animation. Personally, I've been using this cafe background to practice some of my drawing, especially in perspective. What it's really good for is drawing over top of, and again, practicing things like drawing chairs in perspective, tables in perspective, adding people into these backgrounds. I just find it amazingly helpful using these resources, and I believe you can also find downloadable versions of these panorama backgrounds. So give these a shot, see what you can do with them. I'd really love to know your thoughts in the comments if you have any other ideas related to this tip, because I think these panoramas are incredibly useful for backgrounding in manga and animations. And there you have it, that's five essential tips that every manga artist should use in Clip Studio Paint. 
If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you can see more in the future. And comment down below what you thought of the video. I really appreciate your guys' feedback. This has been Spencer from Start Manga, and I'll see you later.